only way to have a pure driving experience in a vehicle is to have a manual. Like this one. Now don't get me wrong, I love going through all the gears and this and that and all the grinding and stuff that happens in between. This is definitely the best way to go along with that uh, third pedal option. But not all cars were created equal and not all cars were created with a manual transmission. With that said though, more modern cars make it a lot funner to drive an automatic. And that's mainly because they incorporate the use of paddle shifters. That is the most common way you get the automatic driving experience in cars nowadays. So what happens if you want that semi-automatic driving experience in an older car? What do you do? Then what you need is one of these. Yes, I know, it isn't much. It's not, uh, it's not like doing a full manual swap, but it will give you a more connected driving experience without having to go through all of the headache of swapping in a manual transmission. And people are gonna say, oh, well, it ain't that hard, oh. Okay, it may not be that hard, but to do it right, it does get a little expensive. So for now, this is how I'm gonna make my Fox body a bit more engaging to drive without spending a couple grand to switch out the transmission. Now, for those who don't know, this comes with a different transmission than the V8 cars do. The V8 cars came with just a standard uh, AOD, which compared was maybe a slightly stronger transmission. Definitely when built can be a stronger transmission. However, uh, you can't manually shift them at all. You cannot control um, the shifting manually like you could on an older C4, or even a newer uh, electronically controlled for our 70W or something of the sort. So it was definitely the middle child of Ford's older automatic transmissions and it really just was not anything remotely fun or nice to have um, in a car. The cool thing is the automatic transmissions in the four cylinder cars, the A4LD was and can, I mean it is, uh, can be uh, manually shifted uh, via, you know, the, the gear selector. So the factory shifter, needless to say, is junk. Not only is it ugly as sin, um, it's just horrible engagement and it's just not very enthusiast friendly. So I went up and I found, uh, this locally, someone was selling the old, uh, B and M hammer ratchet shifter. And, uh, we're just going to go ahead and slap this bad boy in the car. Not only is it going to look better, it's definitely going to make the driving the car more enjoyable while I still have this automatic transmission. And since I'm doing a Turbo 2.3 build, keeping the automatic probably isn't going to be a too bad idea, at least for the time being. It will definitely control the power better. Um, I'm still up in the air whether I want to actually follow through with the manual swap. I'm still thinking about doing a manual swap in the future, but at least for now with the factory drivetrain, this will make it a lot more tolerable for me at least. So I'm gonna get this put in the car today. This is not a tutorial video or a how-to or anything. Um, if anything, this is a how not to do video. And so I'm gonna get started ripping out the interior here and just videoing along as I go. And hopefully you enjoy the video. So it seems that everything has come in the kit here uh, that I bought. It was like never used straight from, according to the uh, instruction manual, 1999. It's like someone bought it and never used it. So that's pretty cool. Um, but of course we got the shifter here. Uh, we have the uh, gasket here, top plate or the base plate, uh, like trim panel piece here. Even has uh, the little shift indicator thing here that goes one drive, overdrive, neutral, reverse park. Um, nice leather shift boot uh, and the beautiful uh, polished metal being on handle. Oh, this is gonna suck in the winter. That's cold. <laughs> and oh, vintage. B&M stickers. <laughs> so, all right. 
There's everything. Let's start ripping into the car so we can get the stuff on. All right, start ripping into all this. Pull this up. Set that out of the way. That out of the way. And, you know, I've never taken a console out of one of these, believe it or not, never needed to. Even though there's directions, I like figuring things out on my own um, because it's how I learn how things are put together. So um, after doing it about 30 times, it becomes second nature and you can have a car part in 30 minutes. This needs to come out. Actually, you know what? I don't think it does. But I'm gonna take it out anyway. Once you get to know the car, things are fine. Until you get to know the car, it's like dating a person for the first time. You're still trying to figure things out. And you don't know whether you like those things or not. <laughs> Ooh, that fell down into the abyss. All right, so that separates that. Oh God, I definitely gotta clean underneath this. So I guess it's a good thing I'm taking it out. I might end up breaking something, just watch. People watching this actually know we'll how to do this, we're just sitting here laughing. Oh, it's got such an idiot. Well, you should just YouTube it. Cause that's for quitters and I'm not a quitter. All right, I caved. I had to look up how to do this. Thankfully, there is a thing called YouTube. And thankfully, there are people who make great videos on YouTube. And uh, let me tell you, this is a lot more involved than I thought. This is a very, um, extensive job <laughs> just to remove something as simple as a center console for some stupid reason four phillips head screws out that hold the front part of the console in i don't know who or what has them in there so tight if they use some type of uh, thread locker or super freaking glue but they're not coming out but i gotta get them out one way or another it's like pulling the sword Excalibur from a stone. That was very overly dramatic. Wow, that's dirty. Yeah. Man, that is some nasty, nasty stuff. It's uh, it's a little moist down there too. You know, when you get old, that's what happens. You start leaking fluids from different orifices and what have you. It happens to the best of us. All right, so I spared you the boredom of cleaning and uh, went ahead and did it. So as you can see, everything looks nice. I'm gonna have to break this up in post, a little dark in here. Uh, but definitely a lot better than it looked before. So now comes the fun part of getting the new shifter in. Oh man, UPS just stopped by and uh, delivered something cool. I don't know what it is. Um, oh, um, oh, you don't need to see that just yet. That's, uh, that's for a later project. Quick update here, cause I'm losing daylight weekly. I uh, got the new shifter in. Uh, it may need some adjustment underneath, but it's mostly good. I got the park cable thing there, safety cable thing, all hooked up and uh, I'm ready to start putting the rest of it back together. So I'm gonna put, I guess, the, the boot on and the cover and all that. And um, yeah, hopefully be done here very shortly. <laughs> it's day two in this project. I did not think it was gonna take this long. Uh, to get through, but I will get a small update before I continue the rest of the process here. So, uh, you know what? I think I need more light. One moment. All right, that's better. So, uh, just to recap here, I got the shifter and see none of this is actually, they use like little clips to hold all the stuff in and uh, I still gotta do all that. But the uh, shifter itself is in place and um, while putting everything together, I realized that something very, very interesting happened um, in terms of mounting this shifter onto this transmission. I kind of find this amusing because this is, uh, I don't know, will give this car a very, very, very different driving experience. 
But basically, I ended up like accidentally creating a clutchless manual. Let me explain. If you see here, the B&M shifter only has enough gear provisions for uh, first, drive, overdrive, neutral, reverse, and park. And the A4 LD transmission actually has seven notches on the actual transmission um, itself that can be that goes into all the gears. What that means is I have no park. <laughs> so let me explain. To start the car, it's got to be in neutral. Kind of funny, right? Because there's a switch, safety switch, that goes right here, and it's got to be in neutral for the car to start. So you start it in neutral. So what is park on the shifter is actually reverse on the transmission. So all the way up, so you gotta lift the handle up to go in reverse, so that's fine. So I don't have to worry about shifting into reverse accidentally. Then one down uh, is neutral. So that's, so that's reverse, that's neutral. That's where I gotta start the car. And obviously if I ever wanna park it, it's gotta go in neutral or forward gear and lift the emergency brake up like a manual transmission car. So then from there you got all your forward gear. So we come down, we got one, two, three, four. That's your forward gears. And then one more, then you gotta lift up, push forward, and then you're in neutral. And then lift up, forward again, you're in reverse. So kind of interesting how I managed to do this. Uh, I got to do a couple small things underneath the car to mount this better and get these top plates on and put the interior back together and it's mostly done. I'm going to go take it for a drive. So we're ready to go for our first drive with the new ratchet shifter. Um, like I said, I'm going to do a full video on how this thing will drive and kind of the process here. But quickly, I uh, got to show you. So I got everything in, handles on. I still need to put two more bolts in here because it just wiggles around way too much. Um, and it kind of messes up with the engagement, but, uh, but so ratchet down the first gear. Obviously, we won't be able to start it until it's a neutral. Just to show that key on, nothing, right? So we gotta go one, two, three. So actually, that was fourth, fourth gear, and then we gotta lift up on the handle and ratchet forward once. That is neutral, and we should be able to start the car. <laughs> yeah. Strange, right? The car's out on the road now, and uh, so <laughs> right now to not move, I'm in neutral, right? So uh, let's see, come down to handle, pull up, ratchet down to, so this will technically be drive. Um, let's see, so that our fourth gear. The thing is, if I take off in this gear, okay, so drive will still work the way it normally will, right? So the only thing is it will it will upshift, but it won't downshift and drive because I have the TV cable disconnected. But if I come down, so here's first gear. First gear, second gear. And that's in third gear, so and then there it goes, it shifted in third. And of course, if I want to go back down to second, just pull back. Now I'm down in the second. And then it, it, the transmission's got to warm up. It's not going to shift right away. It's uh, automatic. It's still going to want to shift when it wants to, not when you want it to. It's kind of cool because it gives it it gives it more character. It gives the, the driving experience more character. Uh, not to mention that shifter just looks a hell of a lot better than the factory shifter um, for sure. And it just, I definitely would probably get like maybe a, a cue ball shifter. That metal sh handle is just, oh my God, when it's cold. Oh, that just sucks so much. Uh, I think there needs, definitely needs to be adjustments um, with the linkage. Maybe I need to make some clearance or something. It seems like it's getting a little bound up. Uh, but other than that, it's, uh, it's pretty solid. So. Definitely, uh, it's gonna be a cool little thing here and it only cost me a hundred bucks. So, can't complain about that. So for the driving video, I'm probably gonna make more of a production out of it. Um, just cause the kind of thing is kind of a funny, unique thing. Uh, modification, not something that's normally done. So I'm gonna make that video kind of special and now it'll be coming up at some point. Um, we're supposed to be getting some snow here in uh, the next few days. So I'm probably not gonna be able to do it until a week or so, but, definitely keep a lookout for that. 
But anyway, that is it for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and if you wanna see more content like this, then go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next video.